So what does the airspace look like, right? What's the problem set we're trying to solve? Check it out. On any day in the United States of America, there are 44,000 flights. This is just the airline flights. This is just the flights that have filed IFR flight plans and are actively working in the air traffic control system. In addition to this, there's myriad of general aviation flights, um, and they're all in the airspace, and they have to share it together. Pretty amazing. Uh, it's an amazing system. It actually works really, really well. Um, com very efficient, uh, you know, born of decades of, you know, scale uh, and iterations, but it is also quite fragile. Uh, one storm in Chicago can create shock that reverberates through the system to create gate delays in Miami, ground holds at all kinds of different airports, and then for the airplanes that are in the air, rerouting to airports that they didn't expect to go to. Uh, I have certainly felt this pain many times coming through Chicago and realized that if you didn't call the hotel from the plane on the tarmac, you're sleeping in the terminal that night. On top of that, passenger travel is expected to double in the next 15 years. So we're going to go from this to this. On top of that, we've got some new players in the business. This whole world of unmanned, right? Drones. And not just drones, you know, like the small hobby drones that we're thinking about, but drones that are going to be performing real commercial tasks. Drones that are going to be carrying packages. Last mile packages, maybe your prescription. Drones that will be carrying massive cargo between two points of a distribution network. Drones that are going to carry people in an urban air mobility use case. The FAA estimates that by 2021, there will be 700,000 commercially operable unmanned vehicles. The number of actual unmanned vehicles is much, much larger than that. But these are the ones that are going to be doing business. So now we take our airspace picture, double the passenger traffic in the next 15 years, and now start to layer on all those drones. It gets busy really quick. The point is, the future of air traffic will be too large for the current system to safely manage the skies, and specifically, controllers themselves. These people are absolutely amazing. If we have any controllers in the audience, thank you for what you do. It, it really is amazing work. But they're disadvantaged, uh, and they're human, right? A single controller can handle between 20 and 22 simultaneous aircraft in their sector. That is not scalable, given the numbers I just showed you in terms of the expectations of air growth. So uh, I hope this works. I have an audio clip in here. This is a JFK approach controller uh, in a reasonably busy period of time. And what I want you to pay attention to is the cadence, the syntax, the sequence of communication. And in it, it's actually funny, um, she gets into an argument with a British Airways captain about something that captain um, can't do. And it's a pretty interesting little interchange. So let's see if it works. Silver 15 kilo heavy, Roger, 7 miles from Zalpo, Third Isle, left runway 22 left approach. Okay, yeah, uh, could be our left, 22 left, could be uh, 15 kilo. Rush all 1 Alpha Juliet heavy, turn left heading 280, maintain 2000. 280, maintain 2000, North Shuttle 1 Alpha Juliet. Endeavour F5192, turn left heading 340, descend maintain 3000. 340, descend maintain 3000, F5192. Final Virgin 45 Whiskey, descending 5000. Virgin 45 Whiskey, heavy heading 310, maintain 4000. Heading 310, maintain 4000, Virgin 45 Whiskey. Speed 15 kilo heavy, speed 180 or greater till 5 DMA. I can't do that, Mom. It can be 160 or greater till 5. Okay, you gotta give me more than 160 from now, though, so when are you gonna float to 160? Yeah, I get that, Mom, but I am flying a 747 and I have to stabilize the search criteria, which I must maintain. Okay, and you still haven't answered my question. Right? I mean, wow. Um, that happens all the time, right? And I mean, here we are, beautiful audio system. That's basically the quality of the audio that you have in the cockpit today. So these are highly trained professionals that have been doing this for many, many years and managed to keep our system really safe. So how AI is going to help airspace management? Why am I up here talking to you about this problem at Time Machine? Well, put simply, I think I've just shown you a use case that has a scale and a scope that is very challenging for the human condition to manage. This is exactly where AI comes into play. And, and specifically, if you combine machine learning and techniques like deep neural networks with scalable compute, you can start to handle a problem of this scale and scope. So what the Boeing company and Spark Cognition announced earlier this year was the formation of a joint venture called SkyGrid. 
SkyGrid is poised to use artificial intelligence to improve efficiencies to management, airspace operations, and, and ultimately safety, right? We need to scale the airspace system. We need to scale the management of that system, and safety must be primary. So fundamentally, what SkyGrid is doing is applying AI to this challenge, not just of the air traffic controller's world, but actually the full scope of operations of unmanned systems. When you start to think about fleet management, you start to think about flight planning, obstacle avoidance, the avoidance of other air traffic, planning optimum efficiencies for your network, right? Because the future, we actually see all of these drones as basically a network of Internet of Things devices. You need an operating system that's going to help you do that, and then you need to also protect that system and all of these capabilities that we get as Spark Cognition's contribution into SkyGrid um, come together with the, the background and the experience of the Boeing company to enable a new system uh, for air traffic management. So airspace awareness, flight planning, you can see how AI plugs into each one of these things. And with that, I thank you for your attention. I hope this has been uh, educational, if not a little bit entertaining. Uh, thanks for your time.